What's up guys, Heeking here bringing you another manga review this week. Uh, apologise, or apologies technically for no review last week. I mean there was, technically speaking, I think I was supposed to do the review for One Piece chapter 1041, which I didn't do, which I'm going to do now. Uh, along with the recent chapter, so I'm going to be going through these. Uh, I've already read them, obviously, so I'm going to give my thoughts. But uh, man, these things when you're on holiday, you just sort of like, do you know what I mean? You just don't want to do any work, so that's kind of the situation here. But yeah, I've got a lot of catching up to do, so let's just get right to it. Remember, guys, to like, subscribe, share, comment down below if you want, and yeah, let's do this. Plus, you know, head cut, look at that. I'm nice now, don't I? Bad dude. Anyway, chapter 1041, uh, Komorasaki. So, yeah, I, I kind of have a hard time remembering where we left off last chapter. Uh, Zoro was still hurt. Uh, I believe, uh, what's his name, Raizo finished his fight with uh, Fukuroji, or whatever his name was. So, yeah, a lot of things, I think, happened where Big Mom was defeated. Kaido had a flashback, I believe, to Big Mom's defeat. I don't know if it's this chapter or the one, or if that was last week's. Uh, but well, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, cover page. Starting with the cover page, we got uh, Pudding, uh, you know, uh, German 66, Cold Blooded Voyage, Volume 5. This is for bullying Sanji son, Pudding's Punch. So yeah, Pudding ends up punching uh, Niji and Yoji, justifiably deserved. It's good that she still cares. So, you know, we got an ally there. We got 100% we got an ally there with Pudding if the time ever comes for it. Um, Going on through the actual chapter now. Oh, that's right. We we left off with uh, Zushina. Zushina. We 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 discovered that uh, she or he was Joy Boy's companion. Whatever that means. Uh, we don't really get any answers to this, unfortunately. Um, uh, Momonosuke knows something. We don't know what it is. He obviously read the Journal for Oda, as he says. But uh, yeah, we don't find out what the big connection is here. Like we don't really find out more. So it's been left as a mystery until they are on, which I imagine we will discover when the arc ends, or just as it's about to end. But yeah, Momonosuke is saying that he just spoke briefly with Zushino, but he still doesn't have a whole picture of it. And well, the elephant is pretty much waiting for orders because Momonosuke is the only one that can uh, talk and control it. Luffy, I believe, can hear it, can hear Zushino, but he can't order it to do anything. But Momonosuke can, so. You know, it's gonna break the walls, 100%. Like uh, the walls that 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 you know that that are around the border of Wano, it, it, Zushina is gonna be Momonosuke is gonna command Zushina to break them up. But we see the uh, we see the world government ships, and we see Zushina up there, and it's it's a massive scale, like it's huge. So they're gonna get wiped out, 100%. The the whatever members of the world government that are there, they're gonna get wiped out. Uh, and this is interesting what Yamato says, it's just like Oda, predict uh, Oda predicted, you're the one that's meant to lead the world to its dawn, okay. Um, I learned why I cannot die from my father's journal, but it seems he tore out the most crucial pages. Yeah, the crucial pages being the pages that talk about One Piece and Laugh Tale and stuff. So, yeah, interesting there, isn't it? it is, it's very interesting that those pages are gone. And Yamato also read th that journal, I believe, as well, so she would know. Uh, everything in that journal except for those pages too. So yeah, those pages are gone. Wait, wait for Oda to sort of uh, hype us up, yeah, with po potential spoilers. But they're like, no spoilers today for you guys. So yeah, we we don't we don't we're not we're not going to find out what's going on there. And it's also probably another hint that Yamato may or may not join the Straw Hat crew because I, I think a lot of people were worrying that oh well she's probably she probably knows the truth like she could just tell them or it'll be weird to have that one character on the crew who knows the truth about One Piece like what's the point of her coming along if she already knows? Do you know what I mean like? But in this case she doesn't. So you you got a good reason now for why she would want to join sort of like a you know I want I want to do what Oda did I want to come with you guys but I also want to know what the one piece is I mean I read that journal and and it's like it's like you know it's that feeling when you read something that's incomplete but you want to know what the ending is so you, you do everything you can to find out so I imagine that's kind of like what they might but what, the, what Oda might pull with Yamato here if she ends up becoming a straw hat member which I do hope will happen <sighs> tasty so yeah uh, as we continue on, we see that Momonosuke has pretty much, you know, created the clouds around uh, Onigoshima and he's pulling on them and he's trying to stop it from falling down, so, yeah. Uh, 
But what's interesting here is what you what you, uh, you know Momonoski says when he read when he read the journal. I am not as wise as he was. I think of the potential dangers to the people of, of people of Wano, and it makes me want to keep the borders shut. Does that make me a coward? So, o Oldham wanted the borders opened, I believe. Uh, the samurai want the uh, borders open, but Momonoski right now is saying he doesn't. There's, there's, and even Yamato is shocked by this by this, uh, you know, acknowledgement from uh, Momonosuke, what he's saying, like, uh, and he's thinking that he's been a coward if he doesn't do this. Apparently he knows something that the others probably don't, and he's contemplating whether he, sh he should open the borders or not. Um, so that's going to be an interesting uh, subplot for, for, for the ending of this, like, what 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 is he going to choose? Is he going to fo follow his father's will, the will of the samurai, and open up the borders like, like they planned? Or... Is he gonna be strict and try and keep Wano safe because of something that's in the country that people will want? Uh, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting what it is. Uh, that's that's the feeling I'm getting. I don't know if this was sort of answered in a previous chapter. Remember, I I don't keep up with this 24/7. Okay, I read, I'm reading this weekly. I tend to forget things until I do a reread of this in the future. So yeah. Um, we cut to the third uh, floor castle interior, the corridor battle with uh, Rise obviously, and what's his name. And yeah, Rizo wins. We get the we get the title card. Victor Rizo. Um, symbolism about this fight. Rizo prevailed the same way that Odin prevailed when he was keeping his samurai safe. You know, it, it's very symbolic of that. He let himself be burnt. He held on, and Fuki, whatever his name is, he didn't. He, he's a fail. He's a flop. He's a failure. Like he didn't have the will or the strength, and Rizo did. Rizo did have that will. He's. If Oda was alive, he would be impressed. He would be very impressed. This dude did what his master did for him. So, in that terms, it's very symbolic. And I, uh, understanding that, it's great. I think it's great. Yeah, I think we all would have preferred a proper ninja awesome battle. But the, what we get here in terms of the symbolism that it represents, uh, I think that's beautiful. So, well done to Rizo there. Well done. And well done for old, old, uh, Oda to, to depict the fight like that, actually. Uh, it's only now that I'm getting there. It's like, understanding. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's what the deal is. And no, that's that's actually beautifully done. So, we get that. Uh, and yeah, uh, in this era, even Shinobi are free to choose Fuko Rokuji. So, that's his name, Fuko Rokuji. So yeah, we got Jibei coming in into into this freaking place of fire and death right now. And he's like, "Hey, you're one of the samurai. Why are you still here? You are one of Luffy Dono's. We must hurry. The preparations are almost complete. What preparations? I don't know what he means by that. But uh, yeah, Jibei just comes in and he's obviously going to save Rizal's life. So that's sorted. Uh, we get we cut to the second treasury. We got Komorosaki, as you, as you know, that's what the chapter is called. And Orochi is with her. You know, he he's followed the sound of the singing. He's discovered that she's alive." Uh, but he doesn't know that she's Odin's door, so I'm expecting something big is going to happen here. Uh, and uh, Orochi himself realizes that Fukuroji has has lost. He's like Fukuroji, you good for nothing, ninja? Where the hell is he? Oh, he's waiting for him to show up. He better not have escaped on his own. Was that tremor earlier due to Konjuru? With any luck, this island will soon be history. And she's still singing. She's still singing that uh, vein, like Komorosaki. Does this look like the time for music? Knock it off this instant. How can you be so content strumming away in that damn mask? This is life or death. It's not like you always have to wear it. Or wear it. Take it off. I still can't tell if you're the real Komorosaki or some kind of wraith. Which is ironic when he says that, you know, if you're some kind of wrath or not. Like, yeah, she is a wraith. She's a wraith. She's a wraith because she's out for revenge. And this is the moment where she does get it. And it's going to be very interesting, like, whether or not Orochi is going to have some sort of... I don't think he is because we did see the samurai just cutting off his heads like he was nothing. So he's, technically speaking, he is a very weak Devil Fruit user, actually. So... He's perfect. He really is. Even Kaido took care of him. Like he's perfect. He really is. And uh, for him to get beat in the way he does is very po poetic and awesome. And I hope I hope it sticks. I really do. I hope this character dies like horribly. And it looks like it might because you have the ceiling falling onto him, and he gets trapped and he can't escape. And he's like and he's like, damn it, why can't I transform? And I can't, I can't get loose. Uh, you were, and you, we get Komorosaki just sitting there watching as the debris has, the roof has fallen on, collapsed onto him. And he's like, you were so distracted that you still haven't noticed. And he's just coughing Komorosaki halfway. Why are you just sitting there? Get this debris off of me. And used a sea stone nail to ensure you wouldn't be able to change into that monstrous form of yours. What are you saying? I thought you loved me. Loved you. Don't be ridiculous. There isn't even a shred of affection for you in my heart. What? It's almost poetic that your favorite song is also Moon Princess. I love that tune. And we get a flashback to Odin, Odin listening to, uh, he, you know, he, 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 Hayori, 
as her name is, playing this song for her father. Really, it's called Moon Princess. I would practice it even harder now. So, he, he cherished it. Kozuki Odin, my father. So yeah, she reveals that. He gets the biggest shock of his life. And she's like, with that like really creepy mask as well, if you will. How could I possibly smile when I play it for you? And yeah. Um, that's great, isn't it? So she defeated him. She she stopped his ability to transform with a sea stone nail. And yeah, she's getting her revenge. She's getting her revenge here, which is great. We cut back to Aizo. As you remember, I said that Aizo was going to get killed. She was going to get killed off. The, the CP0 members were going to kill her. Um, in the castle basement, as we are, live on Kiki. So we get this final. But no. What happens here instead is we get this one CP0 member and, uh, and Aizo pretty much one shot shot in themselves so KO essentially and you've got the main boss just sitting there watching this remember there, there's three of these guys you've got the boss and you've got the two other uh, members one of them we don't know where it is we don't know where the third member is the assumption is that he's the one who injured Zoro but we don't know yet but the boss is here he's watching this fight he's just sitting there in between them watching this and both of them knock each other out basically so there goes Aizo and there goes the other member so she's and he's and he's just like damn you Aizo so yeah she's just her pretty much properly dying at this point and then you've got uh, the other CPI member like Ma, and obviously he's, he's he's down his mask comes off so we get this sort of spike he's got like spiky hair and that uh, I don't think this is anyone we recognize so nothing there and yeah the boss pretty much says taking one of us down with you was your plan from the start so yeah that was our plan so one down two more to go essentially and the fire is just getting more spreading and more consuming. So yeah, things are not looking good for Aizo at this point. So someone needs to come in and save her. Uh, the boss is tending to to his member, but no, it's not. Uh, and he's playing, why is a surviving member of the White Bear crew helping these upstarts? And he's like, the dude's injured. He's injured. He's probably dying now. And he's, and he's telling, he's got, he's been shot, obviously. And he's telling his boss, hurry, get Nico Robin. And he gets a call. You know, the boss gets a call from uh, the Gorose. And this is where we get the biggest shot here. The mission was to capture Nico Robin, but now the orders have changed, and now it turns to you are to eliminate Straw Hat Luffy immediately. It's not even it's not even just uh, Luffy. The Gorose order the order him specifically to kill the entire Straw Hat crew at this point. Capture Nico Robin and kill everyone else. It specifically kill kill Luffy. So, yeah, uh, very interesting development here uh, because it's like where where were these orders from the beginning? Do you know what I mean like? Obviously, uh, obviously, every time uh, the, the Straw Hats confronted like government members, the, the government members were always to capture these guys or p kill them. But I think this is the first time where we et where, where, where we've gotten the Gorosei pretty much giving the straight up the command: kill these guys, kill all of them, like right now. And he's, you got the boss just saying like, "How the hell am I supposed to this? Like, you can't expect me to interfere in that battle. It's probably we are aware of the difficulties." Blah blah blah. You know as you expect. Uh, the world, the world class nature of this battle is what makes this important. Don't you get it? This order is a necessary precau a precau a precaution. This is something they should have done before these guys came into the new world. Before they even entered the Grand Line, essentially. I mean, once they did and they defeated Crocodile, it should have been bloody obvious that these guys are a hindrance and a nuisance. But no, they're giving the order now. Like at this point, they're pro very desperate, it seems. But yeah, even we aren't privy to the details. What's the deal with this crew? There's nowhere left to run, the whole castle is burning, blah, blah. So somewhere else in the basement, and we get, I think we catch up, because this is pretty much what this chapter is. It's a catch-up chapter with, with with all the various characters. We, 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 we see Kiko, I believe, you know, who, I think she was stabbed, wasn't she? She was bleeding out. We got, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, I forgot the main samurai's name now. We got Contra, and what was the other one? See, I don't remember. I don't remember the main dude's name now. Just hold on, Lego. And then we, it's Usopp, he's basically... Trying to save these guys, he's telling them they're not going to die. You got the giraffe dude just like running, like, gonna leave it to me, master. Blah blah blah. Uh, Wandan carrot. Uh, we cut to Wandan carrot. They're with uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Viper Cat. Uh, man, I forgot their names for all of these guys. Archduke uh, and uh, Viper Cat. Uh, what's his name? See, I don't remember the names now. It's gone. It's gone. But Wandan carrot are with him, so they're getting out uh, while they can. I think. Uh, we got Zoro who's falling down, or he was falling down if you guys remember, and Frankie comes in and saves him. And he's like, yeah, so he gets saved. Uh, we cut to Nami and uh, what's 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 the cloud's name? Um, God, was it Prometheus? 
was it Prometheus or Zeus? It was Zeus. Sorry, it was Zeus. We cut to Nami and Zeus. Zeus is crying. Like, he can tell that something bad's happened to Mama. He can feel it. But, you know, she's like, remember Zeus, no, no, who matters and more now, me or Big Mom? And he's like, nah, you nah, you do Nami, of course. So, yeah, yeah. We, we see the characters uh, regrouping here. We got Toma there with, with her dog. We've got Markle there as well in the background healing. Uh, we can't drop our guards here. This island is still the most dangerous. So, yeah, it's pretty much, uh, yeah, it's pretty much this chapter now. Its main focus is just finding out what everyone is and what everyone is doing. We, we're seeing Law and Kid. Uh, things, uh, you know, the whole rooftop is now collapsing, uh, and yeah, they even say that they can't do anything now, like, uh, they have no strength uh, to fight, it's up to Luffy now to finish up Kaido, and we cut to the rooftop where he's just battling out with him, uh, and yeah, this is the point, yeah, this is the point, sorry, because I, I mistook this for last chapter, but no, this is the point where Kaido himself realises that Big Mom's been defeated, and he gets this, he gets this very upset look, it seems, and we get this flashback, uh, to, to when he met her when she was young. Like, it's crazy how um, good-looking Big Mom was, actually. Like, she was quite a milf, I think. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna say, if, if someone looks sexy, man, uh, you know, and she looks sexy there, like, it's crazy. So, but yeah, um, it seems we get the first meeting, and this was when Kaido was 15, for Christ's sake. So, uh, I'm curious, does she, does she give her age? I don't think she does, but yeah, it's like, so this is your first time teaming up with Rox. He's a good for nothing, don't trust him. If something's bugging you, come tell me. The name's Lily. I'm the woman who'll, who'll rule these seas. Nice to meet you. So, uh, yeah, Kaido clearly had a big thing for Big Mom. Me and that old hag have a lot of history together. How could I let this happen? We just swore that we'd help each other get the One Piece, and now he's, get, he's going into his weeping drunk form. So yeah, I, I feel I feel for Kaido here a bit. Like, there clearly is a lot of... I really want to see these flashbacks. I really want to see these flashbacks with how he got close with these characters. Uh, what the deal was with when he was hanging out with Big Mom. And, and uh, I might believe Whitebeard. And they must have all been... I think it was confirmed that they were all together on a crew, weren't they? Before they became the four emperors. But um, yeah, Kaido is upset. Like, he's really upset. Like, this isn't a case of, oh, I wanted to beat her or kill her. No, like, he did see her as a friend. And... I'm still wondering whether Big Mom is alive or not. Uh, I think she is. I think I don't. I don't think their older would just kill her off like that. I do think she will come back, maybe injured and that, but I don't think she's hundred percent dead. I still think she'll have a role to play in a in a L bath. But Luffy goes into his obviously he goes into his snake form as he will, and he and he's just he's just decking Kaido now at this point. You know, Gear Four Snake Man, Gungo no Mi Hydra. So yeah, he's he's beating the crap out of him. And he's like, don't talk to me about your dreams. Your dreams make the people of this country starve. So yeah, Luffy is pissed. He's angry at this point. He doesn't give a crap what Kaido things. And yeah, like, I'm kicking you out of this country for good. So Luffy doing what we can. We're pretty much into the final fight at this point. That's pretty much what this chapter establishes. We, we, we see what all the characters are, what they're doing. We've got characters escaping. We've got characters getting rescued. And then we end with uh, Luffy pretty much, uh, you know, going all out now on Kaido at this point. It's the final part of the fight, I guess. It's the climax, if you will. Realistically, I'd say we got, like, maybe 10 chapters, I'd say, at, at, at about, at best, uh, before this fight ends. But if you've if you read this week's chapter, the recent chapter, uh, 1042, it doesn't seem to be the case, actually. So, yeah, unexpected things tend to happen. So, yeah, that's my review for 1041. Uh... Uh, remember to like and subscribe guys and we're going to continue on moving on to the next chapter actually so let's let's do that now uh huh so yeah guys uh part two of this review uh it's gonna be a long one probably gonna be a 30 minute video jesus christ right uh but yeah chapter 10 of 42 winners shouldn't need realizations a ration ra ra rationalizations winners shouldn't need ra rationalizations ah, i'm saying that wrong i'm pronouncing it wrong like and subscribe for me pronouncing it wrong guys but yeah so we're cutting to the cover page. Uh, Pudding's just decked them, and uh, I think I think this dude's Oven. I think her brother Oven, uh, and we got that big nose sister there as well. And he's and he's basically taking the book. It's called the Rain Smoke, sixty six. So they're in a book called Rain Smoke. Interesting uh, on the back of it. Uh, German sixty six, Cold Blooded Voyage, Volume six, uh, taking Ninja and Yoji to Whole Cake Island. So yeah, the the brothers are taking getting taken to Whole Cake Island. I'm wondering. And and it, and it seems that even Oven is suspicious of Pudding here. But I'm wondering if this uh, cover story is going to lead to Pudding uh, rescuing the brothers and then them taking her and all three of them maybe leaving 
whole cake island and and, and she's gonna go and be with German 66 maybe I'm wondering if that's what's what's gonna happen but it seems uh that, you know her brother's getting suspicious maybe other relatives are gonna get suspicious maybe we're gonna get see what Katakuri, uh, Katakuri is up to and he's he might join and help I'm, I'm kind of hoping we get that like I really I really want to see I want to see some of basically I, want, I do want to see some of uh, the, uh, the members of, of the emperors like sort of joining them if that makes sense um, Maybe not as official Straw Hat crew members, but as allies that Luffy can rely on. I do want to see Katakuri there. Uh, obviously, Yamato, y Yamato, I think should join, or maybe sort of like a sort of like a like a team of Emperor children, if you will, if if that makes sense. Um, like, like I don't think anyone from Blackbeard's team is, is going to join. So that's that's not going to happen, guys. Uh, from Shanks' team, I don't think anyone from Shanks' team is going to join, but may maybe, maybe, uh, maybe from Blackbeard, like, from Whitebeard's, I I'd guess maybe Marco, and then obviously, uh, Katakuri or Pudding from, uh, uh, from Big Moms, and then obviously Yamato from, uh, Kaido's, but, uh, sort of, just, sort of like, maybe like a collection of, of, of these characters coming from that side, from the bad side, and joining Luffy's group, if you will, that's kind of what I'm hoping would happen, it doesn't have to, I'm not going to get upset if it doesn't, uh, it's not really a realistic consideration, but like maybe just as allies, if you will, like that would be kind of great. Sort of like planting the seeds and these guys realizing, no, these I want to help this dude because I like him. Like like what Marco is doing basically from the White Bay Pirates, he's helping Luffy. So I kind of want to see that progression, if that makes sense, like from 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 all those sides. But yeah, look at that, spending two minutes and a half just talking about a cover page. Uh, so yeah, we cut we cut back, we cut to the president of the chapter, and we see that um, what's his name. Um, this is weird because I don't remember. I don't remember seeing uh, X Drake there. He, he's he stabbed the boss. It's a weird way. I don't know if last chapter we saw Drake or not. Um, I could be wrong. We might have. I'm not too sure. But Drake in his uh, hybrid form stabs the boss through the chest. I mean, there's blood coming out. Like he stabbed him. He stabbed him 100%, and the dude's coughing up blood. Like, why? This is my. This is and, and Drake's like, this is me enacting my own justice. And the boss is like, I envy you. And he speeds away from the blade. So, and he uses the finger bullet punch to it to basically shoot Drake through the neck. So he goes down. Drake going down. One hit wonder. Yeah, pathetic. It's pathetic, really. Like, uh, Oda is just treating this character like trash now at this point. But uh, I, I do think... I don't think he's dead, obviously. Like, yeah, he's been hit in the neck. May maybe he's going to bleed out. Maybe he's going to suffocate to death, choke on his own blood. But I don't think he's quite dead. I think he is going to maybe get involved and try and stop this dude. Uh, because what we see happen at the end of this chapter... Something needs to happen to stop this. Because this boss, this CP0 boss, is becoming a nuisance, essentially. So, yeah, we cut to the flower capital... They're just about to light up uh, the, 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 what is it, the lanterns, the sky lanterns. We got Yosuke's daughter, y y Yazuki's, is it Yazuki who died? Uh, you know, he died laughing. We got his daughter there. Uh, and we're back on the rooftop. And Luffy, where we're coming back, we're, look back, we're coming back basically to the fight. And Luffy's just going all out. He's using the elephant gun. He's using the various different uh, stretching posts, like the hydro form, if you will. And he's just beating on Kaido. And, uh... Kaido, he, he goes through several different phases now in this fight. Uh, he goes through a flirty drunk mode, or fright phase if you will. Stop it, you love, love little sexy. I don't know if the hot thing is supposed to say it means sexy or not, but uh, it's an indication that, yeah, he's in, he's in a very flirty mood. I think we can all, uh, you know, understand Kaido in this situation. We've all been there. We've all been there when we get too drunk and we, we go through our different phases. In this case, I do tend to get very happy, flirty sometimes. Uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, it's funny, but it's also very, very, uh, what's the right word for it? Lame. Okay, I'd, I'd say lame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're still, uh, Luffy's just like, you're still drunk. Like, I think, Luffy, I feel like it's just angry that Kaido is drunk. Like, like for him, I don't, I feel like he's not taking it serious, but Kaido's like, I hope you don't think you're the only one who can, you know, he's burping as he's drinking. I hope you're like, yeah, the only one who can see the future. Like, uh, I'll tell you, and yeah, it, it, it's just, it's just, it's just, this whole chapter now, basically, from beginning to end now, uh, from that, for, after that Drake segment, it's just, it's just uh, an entire fight between Luffy and Kaido, you got Kaido going into his dragon form now, and I, lo I love the dragon form, man, like, I really want to see, watch the anime, just to see how they animate uh, him in this, because the, the way, the way Oda just draws Kaido when he goes to his dragon form is just awesome, 
But yeah, we get this moment where where, where yeah, he tra he transforms into his dragon form, and, and now it's called thieving drunk phase. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Thieving drunk phase? What like you you, you turn into a thief when you're drunk? Do you like I've, I've, I don't I don't think I've ever had that uh, phase in my life when I went drinking. But yeah, Kaido goes for a freaking bite, and he's literally swallowing Luffy. At the, I mean, he, he lo it looks like Luffy. Yeah, Luffy is in Gear Four, by the way, but it looks like he's in his uh. No, uh, I don't think he's in his bounce man form yet, but uh, yeah, he bites down on him, and Luffy's just screaming, and he literally gets swallowed with his legs sticking out, like, yeah, his legs are sticking out of Kaido's mouth, and he's basically getting swallowed, and telling him to let him go, and Kaido goes all the way up into the air, opens his mouth to throw Luffy out, and then he does a freaking a laser blast beam, like, blast breath, that shoots Luffy down onto the roof, and that blast breath, it goes through the roof, man. It goes through the roof. It goes past uh, some uh, characters here. I think some of uh, the uh, enemy soldiers. It goes past Yamato through the bloody, uh, you know, armory and down. Like, so, yeah, another big crater hall, if you will, created. Uh, and, and just Luffy falling. And he goes into his bounce man form. His bound man form, if you will, to, to fly, essentially. To fly back up towards Kaido. And yeah, uh, and Luffy's just like, how many minutes have I got left? This is my last, my last gear fourth. I don't have time to waste. So yeah, Luffy's running out. He's running out, and he realizes like, you can't lose. Like this is it. This is the final fight. Are we getting the final punch? Because that's what it feels like. Um, and yeah, Luffy goes for that freaking, uh, you know, Kong punch. He's he's defending the samurai, and, Luffy, and Kaido's just giving that typical, you know, you're weak, you're blah blah blah. There's just losers, blah blah blah. And Luffy's going for the supreme Kong gong. He hits him. Kaido gets hit. He's going down. He's falling down. He's going in for that, you know, hit. A roaring thunder. Something's happening. Luffy's getting shot. Bugman. And there's there's Kaido back in his hybrid form, hitting him with the freaking club. Luffy goes down. He gets injured. It looks like he's done for. But. Uh, you know, the, the air is coming out of him, the air, you know, the energy that he needs to hold on to, to be maintain that form is coming out, he's like, mm, can't let any escape or lose power, and now Kaido goes into his homicidal drug phase, which, yeah, he looks pretty terrifying here, and, and he's just like, one more shot, if this isn't enough, I'll lose, so now he's going for that final hit, essentially, Kaido and Luffy going at it, they're going face to face, he's like, bring it on, brat, thunder roaring, Luffy's going there, and then something unexpected happens. We see the CP0 boss come in, jumping on Luffy's back, you know, on his shoulder, touching him, like, like here, on his arm, or whatever, you know. And Luffy notices this, and then this dude's, like, iron body. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this fight does. I, I don't know what this move does. It seems Luffy either got distracted, or when he did, or whatever this move is that this you know, CP9 dude did, Iron Body, maybe it means that it hardens Luffy up to the point where he can't move anymore, and yeah, Kaido, he get you know, he sees a CP, he sees that it's him, he sees the CPO dude, and he gets flashbacks to when he fought Older and how Older lost, which is basically very similar to how Older lost, when he got distracted by the witch, uh, pretending that he had, Momo, you know, his son Momonosuke, which allowed Kaido to hit and beat him, we get the, we get the page here, Luffy gets smacked down hard, he, he's going down, the CPO spots jumping off at the last minute, and we just get this very, we get this look in Kaido that pretty much says it all, like, not again, not bloody again, and rush of emotions as it ends, so yeah, no break next week, we're getting the next chapter next week, but yeah, um, unexpected unexpected i didn't think luffy would lose we don't know what's we don't know what the situation is right now but uh just from the flashbacks that we get kaido is obviously remembering the last time he fought odin in his fight and he got distracted and that was the one time where he was having a good fight you know it left him scarred he was enjoying himself and now he's enjoying himself with luffy and then this guy comes in and interrupts it so a second time history is repeating itself for kaido and it looks like he's like upset like he's really upset potentially pissed unexpected yeah yeah he did not want this he did not want luffy to lose like this he wanted this to be a mono or mono fight he was getting in that mood again and luffy just got hit so what does this mean for next chapter the CPO's boss, I think, would be very strong. A lot of people are saying this dude's going to get wrecked. Maybe he will get wrecked, but keep in mind, this dude is supposed to be the strongest of the CP members, okay? Like, he's number one. Okay, he's the boss of CP0, right? 
So this dude can't can't be some weakling. This dude would have to be at least admiral level. So I'm expecting to see some sort of fight between Kaido and him now. Maybe like just Kaido losing his crap and beating this dude to a bloody pulp. I'm expecting to see flashbacks now. I'm, I'm expecting to cut into Kaido's flashbacks now and get that. And I'm expecting for Luffy not to go out. Not, and uh, maybe he'll get rescued by someone else. Maybe Drake's going to come in. Maybe Yamato's going to come in. But I'm expecting Luffy to now maybe go into Gear 5. Like, I think I think at this point we need a new gear. It's going to be Gear 5, I think, if we are going to get it. Uh, probably flashbacks to Luffy training with Rylan and, and, and discovering this ability. And may, maybe it's going to be the awakening. Maybe Luffy's finally going to awaken himself. So, yeah. One important detail to mention is, I don't know if it was this chapter or the last chapter that I read... Uh, Kaido says something about how Robber shouldn't be able to do this, which is when Luffy's doing his little Hydra move. Um, and uh, uh, recently, throughout th throughout this arc, uh, just recently throughout these chapters, really, like the last few chapters, we getting we've been getting hints about this legendary unexpected devil fruit. And now I'm wondering, and there's a lot of theory online right now whether this fruit is the Gomino, the, you know, the Robber Robber fruit. Is it is it is it a special fruit? Is it more than just a rubber rubber fruit? Is there something about it we didn't know previously? Is there a specific reason why Shanks stole it? Like like that we didn't know before? Like is Ola gonna trip our balls and reveal something? Don't know. Guess we'll have to see and find out. So yeah. Is that is that more to Luffy's devil fruit? Maybe, potentially, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, luckily we don't have a break next week. So spoilers for this chapter will be coming out. Uh and then we get to read and enjoy it. And I think and then I think after that we're gonna be on a break. So yeah, but uh yeah. Uh or is this is this a chapter that came out? No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was like Komorosuke we had last week and then this week. So yeah, one more chapter this week and then that's it. But yeah guys, um next week, sorry. Anyway guys, like I said, uh like and subscribe. Uh remember to share if you want. Uh comment down below if you want. And yeah, guys, uh as always, I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and Bye.